This video will demonstrate saving forms and layers within the Surety Pro Customize Online Mapping account. The ability to save, display, and recall form data is a core component to Surety Pro. After logging into Surety Pro, we are presented with a small list of forms to choose from. These are considered read-only forms and are not able to be saved within the program itself. To display and use the savable forms within the system, we need to select a client. To do this, we can click on the text box next to the client in the upper right hand corner of the mapping interface, and it will pull down a list of different clients that are available within your account. If you have not added any clients to the account, you can do so by clicking on the pencil button to the right of the text box, or we can use this to edit or delete existing clients as well. At this point, let's go ahead and select a client from our dropdown in order to bring up the rest of the forms. After this client is selected and the map reloads, we have now a full list of forms to choose from. The forms that were added after our client has been selected are considered savable forms. The records that we save into these forms are saved to the client level. This has two exceptions, the FAA obstructions and the sensitive area forms save information to the company level and so the information is available for any client that has been selected. To demonstrate saving a form, I will zoom down to the field that I want to use, select it, and create a form by clicking on the appropriate option in the right hand panel. Once the form loads, we have a few different features we can use to make creating and filling out a form much easier and quicker to do. One of these features is the ability to use a pick list. For example, if we click on the text box next to crop, we will be presented with a drop down of different crops that we can use. This is similar to the client list that we used earlier and where we can add, remove, and modify items in our crop list by clicking on the pencil icon. If we want to add an item to our crop list, we can click the plus button in the lower left hand corner, type in the name of our crop, and click save. We can also click on a crop name, and then click on the pencil icon to modify it, or click on the trash can icon to delete it. We can also set one of these crop names as the default crop. What this means is every time a form opens up, it'll automatically populate this crop into the specified text box. To do this, we can select the corresponding checkbox next to the crop name that you want to. Once we are done modifying our crop list, we can close out of the grid view and now select from the updated list. Another feature within the forms is the quick fill option. Quick fill allows us to store commonly used items in order to be selected later and populated on our form. An example of this is within our application form such as the chemical application form that we have open here. The quick fill will populate groups of commonly used items into our product grid. To use it, Simply click on the Quick Fill drop down, select the friendly name that you've assigned to it, and the information will appear in the product grid automatically. And of course, we have the status on the top, which is also a pick list that we can add and modify. This is typically used for tracking saved forms within your system. Once we have the form filled out to the desired state, we can save it with the Save Form button and then close.
In our example, we can see that there's now a blue hashing over the area that we had selected to create our chemical form. Each form template saves separate layers in order to style them differently. We can take a look at this by clicking on our Layers button, and we can find our chemical form within our layers. We can remove this styling completely from the map by removing the check mark next to the chemical name. The map will update and remove that layer completely from the map. We can still see the boundary that we selected earlier because that is saved within a separate borders layer. If we turn this chemical form layer back on, we can also change how it looks by clicking on the word chemical. Within this layer properties window, we can change a few different things. The hatch type, the color of the fill, the color of the outline, the width of the outline. If you'd like to get more advanced in your coloring, we can style by a specific attribute. We would use the or color by dropdown to choose an attribute from the form itself. Something such as crop name can be used, or field ID, status, once clicked, a little pencil icon will appear next to this or color by line. When we click that pencil, we can also assign colors to each one of the items in that particular attribute that has been saved to the form layer itself. So for example, in this one, anything that does not have a status will be a yellow. Anything that has a status of accepted will be a dark blue. Complete will be a light blue. And requested will be this reddish pink color. For the time being, I'm going to remove my or color by and just demonstrate the basic coloring. The fill opacity mainly comes into play when we have a hatch type of solid or we have a solid fill on the record. This is how much you can see through. So if I set it to a low number such as 25 then you can see through the color itself more than you would if it was at 90. We can update this to see our changes as we go. You can also apply labeling by clicking on the Labels tab. Again, we have different settings for the labels, so we can change when this label appears, the size of the label, the style, the color, the outline. And the add label is where we would pick what type of labels that we want on this. Again, we can do something common such as status, acres, and field ID. Update it. And see our changes on the map. You can always revert back to the system default by clicking the default button or click on save to accept your changes. In Surety Pro, there is also the availability of saving a layer that's primary purpose is to show information on the map itself. This can be in the form of a label or a boundary color. An example of this is the sensitive area layer. This layer's main purpose is to mark out areas of interest or sensitivity, such as organics, apiaries, vineyards, and so on. Let's say it was desired to mark out an apiary so that the chemical applicator can be aware of that location just by looking at his map. The first step in creating this layer would be to either select or draw an area on the map. I'm going to use the drawing tool, draw field, and I'm going to draw my apiary location and then I'm going to click on sensitive area over in the right panel. 
for the crop, I'm going to just type in what I want this labeled. In this case, apiary. And if you have other information that you want to document, can as well. I'm going to click Save to commit my changes. The map will reload and the sensitive areas layer, which can be found again in the layers panel, will automatically be checked. You can see that it's by default a red color in order to indicate an area of interest. If we wanted to add a label indicating what type of sensitive area this is, we can click on our sensitive area in our layers panel pull up the layer properties, switch to our labels tab, and add the label crop name, since that is where we saved the information we want displayed as a label. We can highlight this a little bit more by, say, increasing the font size and giving it a little brighter outline. And let's go ahead and save this. And now you can see that this apiary is now labeled so we know exactly what this area is. We can reopen a saved form and do a couple things with it. So say you wanted to change the boundary of this field that is saved within the system. We can select it with the select tool and then click on the chemical option over in the right, which is the type of form that was created initially. It's going to give us the opportunity to either create a new chemical form for this location or edit an existing chemical that was created on a previous day. I'm going to click on the edit chemical. This is going to bring up our save form with all of the information still filled out. With this save form open, we can modify the boundary of this saved record by clicking on the Edit Fields button. It'll bring us back into your main interface into a special field edit mode where we can make desired changes to the boundary and resave it. In this case, it'll also include this sensitive area in the saved record as well since it is now on the map. Let's go ahead and make some modifications to this boundary. So I want to also include the top section of this field. Make sure it's drawn out and I will click apply changes. You're brought back to the form. And as you can see, it now adds these acres to our total acres. And again, it will add that sensitive area as well since it is now on the map. To save these changes, we can again click Save Form and close.